I'd like to introduce you to Apple's AirTag. It's their latest foray into the world of Bluetooth trackers, and it's something we've been waiting quite a while for now. The idea is it helps you find things you've lost, whether it's nearby or far away. And to put it to the test, I'm gonna be leaving this backpack full of precious merch on this train, and we're gonna see how easy it is to get back in a couple of hours. This train is for waterfront. Now, before the panic sets in, what you're gonna to wanna to do is put the AirTag in lost mode. You can do that by just opening up the Find My app and then tapping on the object and clicking Enable Lost Mode. Now, what this lets you do is put your phone number with the AirTag so that if somebody finds it, they can connect to the AirTag with NFC, be taken to a web page with the number, and hopefully reconnect you with your lost object. I'm curious if that's what's gonna to happen to us today. All right, so in the meantime, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a set of keys that I had a colleague hide somewhere in the city. And one of the great things with AirTags and the Find My app is that you can get directions straight to the place using Apple Maps. Now, while we're on the way to this AirTag, I should probably explain how AirTags work. Now, they don't have GPS built into them that would take too much electricity, so they use Bluetooth Low Energy. And with Bluetooth Low Energy, what an AirTag is doing is it's looking for another phone to connect to to then send out its location. The big leverage point for Apple is that they use their Find My Network, which is basically every iPhone that has it turned on, which is upwards of a billion users now. And what that means is that the AirTag can connect with an encrypted connection to any iPhone that's nearby and tell you where it is. So you're bound to get a more accurate reading more quickly with AirTags than you would with any of the competitors. In 250 meters, the destination is on your left. Arrive. Where are we? All right, so we've arrived at where it says the keys are, and now I have to go and find them more precisely. So let's see how this goes. Okay, so it says that uh, the keys are here with me. So what I'm gonna have to use is ultra wideband to get a precise location of where it is just by hitting find nearby. It's gonna try and connect, oh, six and a half meters away. Try and connect to the air tag and then point me in the direction of where it is. Now, ultra wideband only works if you have an iPhone 11 or 12. Otherwise, you can make it make a sound. So it's around here. I should put the sound on. Is it on the ground in the garden? Is it on a There it is. Now, when you get really close to the object, your phone starts to vibrate like it's in a game of hot and cold. And here it is, in a bike. <laughs> How clever. It could have been anywhere in the city. Well, now that I have an AirTag, uh, we can now talk about the design of it. It's a curious little thing that really evokes the design of the old iPod you know, with the glossy white plastic on the front and the shiny glossy chrome on the back. It's also just as easily scratched and scuffed as those old devices were. Now, annoyingly, it doesn't have any sort of hole or anything on it so that you can attach a key ring or some sort of lanyard. So if you buy one of these things, you have to buy a holder if you want to attach it to a key or a backpack. And this key ring from Apple costs $35, on top of the already $30 you spent on the AirTag. Now, I'm sure Amazon will come to the rescue with really cheap options, but I hope they're good quality. So what about when it comes to tracking people, which is probably something you don't want? Apple has thought about that in the design of the AirTags. They have a couple of protections which are interesting. For one, an AirTag that's separated from its owner will start chiming whenever it's moved after three days. So if you don't even have an iPhone, you'll probably know about it then. 
But if you do have an iPhone and you're running iOS 14.5 or higher, you will get a notification saying that an AirTag that's not yours is nearby. We tested this with my cameraman, but he didn't get the notification until he arrived at home. So it's not that instantaneous. In fact, today I've had an AirTag on me all day that isn't mine and I'm still none the wiser. All right, so it's been a couple hours since we left the backpack on the train, and so I'm curious uh, where it is at the moment. Ah, it's at the SkyTrain station, well, actually the Candleline station nearby here, Marine Drive, which incidentally is the train station where I left the backpack on the train. Now, I have been monitoring it through the day, and it did make a couple of lengths up and down the line, but it made it back to its home. This train is for YBR Airport. It says it's here, but it could be... You think there's an office below or something? We should be near it, according to the last update, which was eight minutes ago. I can't get a signal, I can't get a U1 signal, and I can't get it to play sound. With the ultra wideband chip, the range isn't that great. I've seen maybe 10 meters max, which is about 30 feet. 100 feet, 200 feet make things a lot easier, but I'm not getting a signal. According to the map, it's on the tracks. But I don't see anything. Disappointed. <laughs> Disappointed. Your attention, please. Ugh. Okay, so it's the next day, and I thought I'd have to end the piece, you know, thinking that the bag is gone and lost forever, and that we really pushed what the air tag can do. But actually, I checked the app this morning, and it's moved. It's in the maintenance building for the train line, so there's hope. I forwarded your message on to uh, my manager, and I'm sure he'll be in contact with you when the train lost property gets your backpack. You, you can pick it up from them at uh, Stadium Station. Okay, well, I appreciate uh, all the help. You said you called when you were coming here because it could still be here, but it could still be in quarantine right now. Why don't you give me a description and I can go back it's, there So it's it's just a, a blue and red backpack. It should have a little thing dangling on the front of it. A little thing dangling yeah. on the front of it. Thanks. It must be not out of quarantine, Jonathan. Okay, so... so here's our number. Okay. Give us a call. Because it should be out tomorrow morning, I'm hoping. Right. Because you said you tracked it right here. Right? Yeah, I can't. It's it's literally, yeah. it's, right, it's right here. I could probably beep it. I could make it beep. Really? Really? I just want to see if I can hear it for you. It isn't <sighs> Oh, phew. Wonderful. Thank you for doing that. <laughs> Very, yeah, they're so handy, eh? We got it back. <laughs> Never thought that would happen. All right, so I guess what we showed is that the lost and found system does in fact work, which is nice to know. But if I didn't have this, I'd have to use TransLink's broken web form or call them and try and describe what the bag looks like and hope it just turns up. But this just made things so much easier. And now I have it back. For me, initially I thought the AirTags would just be ideally suited for my wallet because I do lose it in the house on occasion. But I don't know, after this, there's something to be said about attaching one to your bag or to another object you value, should you ever really lose it. It really goes to show just how handy that Find My Network is. Thanks for tracking this MAC address and make sure to like and subscribe. Now I'm sure you're curious what's in this bag, so let's take a look. We got an adorable little CPU pillow from the LTT store as well as a water bottle still in its box, a fashion wireless keyboard, and a bunch of t-shirts that are too big. 
Where's the mock turtleneck? 